Welcome back to more Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Last time we went over the Copad's data files, so this time we're beginning Olimar's assignment. Set concurrently with the main story, this consists of a series of missions featuring Olimar and Louie. First up is Day 1, Flower Garden. Just because the treasure is buried or hard to spot doesn't mean I won't expect you to grab those too. The President. Let's hope the third time's a charm on this planet. The Pikmin haven't changed much at all. The side story missions consist of various areas from the main game with new objectives. So first of all, in the Garden of Hope, we have to gather up all of the fruit and gold in this area. We have both captains, Captain Olimar and Louie, so we still have co-op in this mode. And one interesting detail is the cutscenes for Olimar's assignment are the secret video files from Miiverse from the original release on Wii U. There are actually several contradictions that we'll be seeing later on, so the canon status of Olimar's assignment and also Olimar's comeback later on is actually heavily debated. For example, over here we have Rock Pikmin and some Dwarf Bulborbs. These Rock Pikmin are new. But over here, there isn't actually an adult Red Bulborb unlike the cutscene. So there are several issues with this mode. In general, I feel like these are just nice little bonus missions, and even though they may or may not actually be canon, they're still fun to go through. These are only in Deluxe, so if you have played the Wii U version, I'm not entirely sure if I could say that these are overly worthwhile if you aren't overly interested in the mission mode, because this heavily draws from the base game's mission mode. For example, in this mission we have a 9 minute timer, and we basically get a score depending on how much we actually collect. The maximum rank is a platinum medal, and I'll do my best to get all platinum medals in the side stories. First of all, we want to build this bridge over here. We also want to gather up all of the other Pikmin as well to deal with the mushrooms over there and also a wall to explore a little bit more of this area. We'll be seeing the mission mode at a later time. In general, I feel like the mission mode in the base game, because it actually had co-op from the beginning, unlike the campaign, it definitely feels like that mode is a lot more designed around co-op compared to the base game, where I almost feel like co-op is a little bit too useful at times and ends up actually kind of trivializing certain elements. Similarly, I feel like the side stories are easier than the mission mode stages and also would be a lot easier in co-op as well, but in terms of platinum ranks, this is a lot more manageable, in my opinion, than the actual missions. So with a bunch of Pikmin in tow, we're going to let the Rock Pikmin collect the gold over there, and in the meantime we'll go through this area to see what we can find. We have some more Red Pikmin over here, along with some more Dwarf Bulborbs, so we'll swarm them to take them out. I'll also do my best to avoid losing any Pikmin, there is no penalty, no matter. This Copad thing is proving quite useful. There is no penalty for actually losing Pikmin in this mode, so you can still get a Platinum rank even if you lose Pikmin, but for the sake of this playthrough I'll do my best to avoid losing Pikmin nonetheless. Over there we have some more Scudder Chucks, we'll definitely want to take them out before we start worrying about carrying things back. We also have a bridge to build over here, otherwise Pikmin will take things the long way around. I think the Pikmin are carrying a bunch of stuff around that way. Actually, they're coming this way, which works out nicely. 
We actually did build the bridge. I was thinking of the main story. This bridge will increase efficiency. Yeah, I was confusing it with the main story, where you have to build the bridge from the other side. But in this mode, we actually did build the bridge from the landing site area. So we are free to carry everything back. Overall, this is a very nice starting mission to let you get your bearings on this new side story mode. But again, in general, I do feel like these are a lot more approachable than the original mission mode in Pikmin 3. So if you're interested in the mission mode and have Deluxe, I would actually recommend starting with this instead of the mission mode, just because it's a little bit more approachable. In the mission mode, there are a couple of different stipulations, there are different kinds of missions, but one of the types involves collecting treasures like this, but you also have to collect all the enemies, if I'm not mistaken, to get the platinum rank. While in this mode, in this stipulation, we only have to collect the fruit and gold and don't necessarily have to worry about collecting all the enemies. So again, that's another way in which this mode is a little bit more approachable. So we have another pile of gold over here, similar to the bridge pieces and other things we've seen throughout our adventure. The Pikmin will return to that spot once they carry everything back, so in a situation where you actually do need Pikmin still for something later on, you would have to actually manually go back and round them all up. Over here, it looks like they're basically done. So we should be good to go. We have one more fruit, I'm pretty sure, and the rest of the gold. To speed this up, we're going to head over here and charge our remaining Pikmin at this pile of gold. Never mind, you're actually good to go with two rock Pikmin here. So that basically wraps up day one of Olimar's assignment. Overall, that was a fairly straightforward day. You also get a better score. You basically get a time bonus if you have time remaining after a platinum rank. Words cannot describe how I'm feeling, Your Highness. Please accept this platinum medal and a song written by yours truly. It's been a while since my last treasure hunting expedition, but I found a few choice artifacts. Good to know I haven't lost my touch. The raiders detected something juicy, so we'll investigate that tomorrow. I hope it's something valuable enough that we can finish the mission early. A lot of the side story missions are relatively short, so we definitely have time for another. So let's move on to day two, Inside Forest. You'd better get all the treasures near the water. I don't care what you have to fight to get them, just do it. The President. We had quite a haul. This time we're in the tropical wilds with a time limit of 10 minutes and a bunch of blue and red Pikmin. First of all, I want to take some time to raise our numbers. One of the very stressful things about the side missions is trying to balance tasks. So for example, obviously raising Pikmin takes time, but it'll make tasks go faster. So it's a bit of a juggling act finding 
the right balance between spending too much time raising Pikmin and having a task take a very long time because you don't have enough Pikmin to efficiently get through it. With a bunch of Pikmin in tow, we're going to have the red Pikmin work on the wall, and with the blue Pikmin, we're going over here to see what else we can find. We're also going to leave Louie with the red Pikmin for now. Over here we have more enemies, blue Pikmin will come in handy here. We also have some more red Pikmin planted in the ground, and some water dumples. We do need to fight these water dumples because they do have fruit. I am very nervous about this because again, I find fighting water dumples very inconsistent in this game. For some reason, sometimes they'll latch on right away and it'll be a really easy fight, other times they get shaken off really quickly, and then you'll lose a lot of Pikmin in the process. That worked out well, so let's see if we can have two clean water dumple fights here, and we're good to go. We also have a ball board. So let's deal with the Dwarf Ball Borb first of all. It's relatively easy to defeat by simply swarming, and we also have some more Pikmin planted over there. So I definitely want to round those up. We also have a Buried Fruit and another one across the water. I do feel like this cutscene is very interesting. For one thing, it mentions the Cosmic Drive Key, and also because Olimar and Louie are in very different parts of the Tropical Wilds. Olimar is by the waterfall, near the landing site, and Louie is in this area. Again, a lot of things don't necessarily line up in these cutscenes, which is very interesting. Again, there were just kind of neat little easter egg bonus videos in the original, and I almost feel like with trying to make side stories out of them, there do end up be- it ends up that there's a couple of inconsistencies there. So we'll have the red Pikmin work on that. We'll dismiss the rest and gather this up over here along with these blue Pikmin across the water. Hidden treasures abound in places like this. But again, as a fan of the originals, it's actually just really nice having more missions with Olimar, given that he was the original protagonist. So, and also Louis here, and that's kind of cool. I'm actually not as big of a fan of Louis compared to Olimar, just because I feel like his character can be summarized as he likes food, and that's about it, while I feel like Olimar has a little bit more depth. Though with Louis, you still have the messages from his family in Pikmin 2, so I do feel like Louis is still an interesting character in his own way, but I do think Olimar is a much better character by comparison. We also want to actually... I think we have enough Pikmin right now, so I think we will leave the ball borb and we'll simply worry about gathering up everything else. We want, we want to round up all of our Pikmin and deal with a couple of enemies. There should be a wall blocking the long legs arena that now has an orange ball borb, so we want to work on that, and there should also be some more enemies along the path as well that we'll want to take care of. Over here, we have some more gold. We'll worry about that in a bit. Nectar can be very useful for carrying nuggets. If only we could find some. We also have a Wallywog. Um, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go without Rock Pikmin. Let's hope for the best here. Again, the Red Pikmin are very good at combat, even though, in general, I do prefer fighting enemies like that with Rock Pikmin just because it's a little bit safer, even though Red Pikmin, because they can latch on, actually do more damage. So again, even though the Red Pikmin don't have to deal with fire much, they do come in handy for combat. Also, having preset loadouts for Pikmin also is nice from the standpoint of kind of forcing you to use specific configurations compared to the main game, where you can easily get past certain sequences with non-intended types of Pikmin, like the entirety of the final boss, basically. So again, there is some merit to actually limiting the amount of Pikmin you can actually have, and limiting which types you have, because in a lot of cases, it ends up feeling a lot scarier using Pikmin that might not be able to cheese certain elements. I'm also very nervous about this orange ball board fight. Again, it shouldn't be too bad because we have the ability to stun them by attacking their eyes, but again, a lot can still go wrong. This is hard work, but I'm doing it for my family. It's also, it's also worth mentioning that a lot of enemies are scaled to normal mode rather than hard mode or ultra spicy mode. So in a lot of cases, even scary enemies like this, and even like ball bears that we might see later on, actually aren't that bad, just because we're basically not on the hardest possible difficulty, which is kind of nice at least. 
I almost wish for the side stories and also mission mode proper, you could actually select the difficulty, but you actually can't. It basically defaults, in most cases from what I can tell, to normal mode. Unless I'm forgetting something, which is entirely possible, that should take care of this area. Guess what, I did forget something. There is a fruit in the water, so we'll have Louie round up the blue Pikmin, and we also have this over here, so we might as well carry that back with the blue Pikmin while we're here, and we will round up this little cherry in the water. That should finally be, or that should really be the final fruit, final fruits in this area, so we should be good to go for day two. Now it's just a matter of waiting for everything to be carried back. Obviously you could do these missions a lot faster, but I feel like that was a pretty good run overall, and again, as far as I can tell, we didn't actually lose any Pikmin. I'll have to double check the recording to make sure, because there were a couple cases where I kind of lost track of the numbers, given that usually I have 100 Pikmin on the field, in these missions you often don't, so I often get a little bit turned around by some of the numbers. So yeah, we have that that last fruit to go, and we are basically done with day two. Words cannot describe how I'm feeling, your highness. Please accept this platinum medal and a song written by yours truly. We found a key, but we haven't seen anything it might unlock. I was hoping to pick up a small souvenir for my son, and this may be just the thing. Side note, although Louis doesn't say much around me, I've spotted him muttering to himself when he thinks no one is around. In many ways, he's even more of a mystery than the Pikmin. So next time we'll try to tackle both Day 3 and Day 4 of Olimar's assignment. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Pikmin 3 Deluxe.